Yuji's awakening has changed Jujutsu Kaisen forever. He has become a king as his potential surpasses Sukuna. No way! But that's not all. Five other revelations answer questions established at the beginning in chapter 1. We finally know what Yuji's grandpa wanted to tell him, as Sukuna actually had a twin, and the purpose of Kenjutsu was to use him. Then, there's Yuji's demon god mode breaking the Black Flash record, and unlocking all his powers, including Sukuna's curse technique, Shrine. Let's go! Now, to make sense of everything, chapter 257 drops a bombshell from the very start. Uraume asks Sukuna why a kid like Yuji is so powerful. Back in chapter 215, when they were mocking Yuji, she felt a similarity between the two, which cannot be explained by Sukuna's curse energy residue within him. At the time, through this panel, you can see the king was absolutely shocked. He pondered where this strength came from and realized that Yuji was from back then. And Kenjaku had cooked up an opponent that could match him one day. Sukuna reveals the answer we waited six years for by revealing that they are related. Sukuna claims he had a twin whom he ate in the womb, but his brother's soul went through the cycles of rebirth and reincarnated. Kenjaku then had the brilliant idea to take back shots from the person who had the twin's soul, none other than Jin Itadori. Wait, can I just stump you there? Harrison, this better be good. Well, I've got a gaming console that I can't mention that may May or may not be the fifth of its kind, as well as tons of other things like ten thousand dollars worth of Amazon gift cards to hand out. Oh, keep talking. Yeah, well, you see, Raid Are Shadow Legends right now, are celebrating the arrival of Spring in Teleria with a special Spring Hunt mini game. Players just have to find hidden items around Mistwood after downloading Raid using our link. You hear me? Our link. Then just head to this URL on screen and pinned below to start searching. I'm being serious. This is the first time ever Raid are doing something like this, and you seriously do not want to miss out because that's not all. They're also launching their first ever community weeks nice. as part of a six week long celebration. Celebration. There's a 14 day login program where after 7 days you can unlock the legendary champion Chronicler Adelin. So if you haven't used my link yet then just scan this QR code on screen and treat yourself to some insane bonuses like the epic champion Tyrell and the epic Rector Drath. Listen, ain't anyone gonna replace my guy Gizmak, he is him. But if you use code SPRINGHUNT24, then you'll get even more freebies. Okay, well, you've convinced me, Harrison. Come join my clan, Balls Deep Gang, and have some fun. Yeah. Yuji's father is Sukuna's twin, which led him to indirectly sharing the same soul, as Jujutsu considers twins as two halves of one soul. This implies that Yuji's true potential is equal to Sukuna. Editor, can we have a flashback from two years ago, please? This leads us to the theory that Sukuna also had a twin, or a brother that he either killed, absorbed in the womb, or even ate, which leads to his evolution and making him a natural calamity even in his human form. So I just want to give our community a round of applause for getting this correct. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what it means to enjoy the story together. And with your help hitting the notification bell, everything becomes better. Chapter 257 reveals Sukuna eating his twin brother led to the evolution and made him a natural calamity, even in his human form as Gege mentioned. We already know that having a twin is a major problem for the jutsu growth of both siblings, as we saw with Mai and Maki Zeni. So, if Sukuna also had a twin who was stopping his growth, he would kill that person without any doubt, as he presents the whole idea of being individual. He doesn't care about anyone's ideals and admitted in chapter 257 that he rejected the fate of being a twin. Hence, to not die of starvation, he ate his brother, which also explains why he has multiple eyes, multiple arms, and an unsettling desire for human flesh, as evident by his act of consuming half of Angel's body. Speaking of which, Angel made a decision to not prioritize herself and even 
even said in chapter 199 that she follows God's creed. Therefore, forming a symbiotic relationship with Hanakurasu instead of taking over her body and soul. 1000 years ago, this creed deemed Sukuna the fallen one. And when we link this to Kashima's question, did you become the strongest or were you born the strongest? The king's response makes more sense now, stating, I know I was an unwanted child abomination. Even Yuji overlooked protecting himself when he formed a binding vow with Sukuna, ultimately backfiring in the worst way possible. This is why Sukuna considers these ideologies foolish, as he states to Itadori that flies should just die in misery rather than cling to life. Think about it. In nature, animals are born with a certain fate, meaning they are either predators or prey, whereas Sukuna chooses to have a predatory mindset. Dege states in the fan book that Sukuna terrified people out of their minds to the point that they didn't even recognize him as human. However, since Jujutsu Kaisen follows the route of Buddhism, the twin soul turns out to be Jin Itadori, which is the puzzle piece fitting perfectly in the lore as this implies that Yuji is Sukuna's nephew. Now, another question that has been answered in chapter 257 is the fact that Gojo mentioned in chapter 2 that Yuji suppressing Sukuna's soul is an ability that appears only once in a thousand years, with the context of 80% of genetics playing a role in a sorcerer's potential. We now understand how Yuji suppressed the king as a perfect cage, just as Sukuna has now claimed. Bruh, no wonder this old man has such massive beef with Yuji. This is a classic Asian family dynamic where no matter what you do, your relatives are never happy. This also makes King Jaku Sukuna's sister-in-law, by the way, and Choso that one cousin everyone likes. What the hell are you talking about? However, the fact that Yuji is just a product of his circumstances, with no choice of his own, reminds me of Blade Runner 2049, where K thought he was special, but he was simply a cog in the machine, just as Yuji proclaimed himself to be. But even as a cog, he's equaled and surpassed Sukuna himself. Left, right, good night, blessed us not with the eight pages mood that we wanted, but something just as good. My man obliterates Sukuna with eight black flashes in a row. The fight between Yuji and Sukuna starts off with a reference to the movie Ray. But what's shocking is that Yuji has also unlocked Shrine. This was something we waited for since Gojo foreshadowed in chapter 12. Sukuna's curse technique was imbued in Yuji's body and he can use it as his own. In fact, his interpretation of Shrine is completely opposite to Sukuna. Now, let me explain. Since we witnessed the difference between Megami and Sukuna's usage of 10 shadows, we already know that curse techniques vary in execution because of the interpretation of the person. When it comes to shrine, Sukuna uses it in a barbaric and non-controlled manner, letting his slashes run free. However, Yuji's interpretation of this technique is quite modern and efficient. Something like, this is the target, cut hair, while Sukuna flexes Flexes his endless curse energy reserves. Yuji uses it as a means to support his physical fight, such as cutting down a pillar to throw it. In other words, Shrine is a shotgun with Sukuna and a rifle in the hands of Yuji. This fact shocks the king, and the narrator explains that Yuji has two techniques now. The first one is blood manipulation because Yuji consumed his remaining brothers, and Shrine was activated thanks to the Zen state Yuji is in due to Black Flash. He's in a condition where manipulating curse energy has become as natural as breathing. Therefore, Yuji's latent potential to match Sukuna all along has been unlocked. As we already know, Black Flash lets you operate at 120%. Well, to counter all this, Sukuna tries to crush Yuji, but it backfires as he gets hit again. This makes him remark that since Yuji has just learnt Shrine, the energy input is weak. Even the king's own attacks are not hurting Yuji 
Yuji as much as before, as they both now share the same technique. This is a callback to Satoru freaking Gojo's final Hollow Purple, who revealed that since it's his own curse energy and technique, he seems to have taken less damage. But speaking of Gojo, our weekly flashback of him has arrived. He's allowing Ino to use Nanami's curse tool imbued with the ratio technique because he trusted Ino the most, meaning that we see Ino jump into battle catching Sukuna by surprise. The dragon slams Sukuna into the wall. Ino also uses the tool, but this is enough time for him to catch and throw Ino away. But Yuji grabs this opportunity to land another attack, which tweaks the heck out of Sukuna, who comments that the brat is using Black Flash like it's nothing for him, bringing back the idea that he is blessed by the sparks of Black. In his earlier fights with Hanami and Mahito, Yuji proved that even though there's no sorcerer who can use the power at will, he is so good at wielding Black Flash that it seems he can do so, almost like it's his curse technique. However, Sukuna moves in to counterattack using a mix of impact blows and slashing, but realizing that it's not phasing Yuji at all. So even though Yuji is all cut up and bloody, including his face, he does not give up, reminding us how Sukuna admitted that Yuji has the most powerful soul in chapter 248. Living in Yuji's body made Sukuna realize that ideals are real, and for the first time, he is seeing them being verified in front of his eyes, as he himself states that Yuji has an invincible soul that will get up no matter what. This fight yet again highlights the fact Yuji is the natural calamity for curses with overwhelming aggression, just as Sukuna is for humans. I mean, remember the I'm you moment? Well, it literally fits perfectly this time round, as Sukuna agrees that their ideals are on equal footing of willpower. But for the king, that's deeply unpleasant to acknowledge. Just take a look at this panel. Sukuna literally destroys one half of Yuji's face, but he still lands another, another black flash, fully tweaking Sukuna, bringing him to his knees and pushing him into a corner. This is peak fiction, ladies and gentlemen. Mwah. We are witnessing Sukuna lose his composure, as well as the hold over a fight for the first time ever. It's finally a win for the sorcerers. However, hold that happiness back because despite being extremely weakened from all of this, let's just take a look back at everything he's tanked. This guy just doesn't die, as Sukuna still managed to survive all eight Black Flash punches. Awesome bump, man. Awesome bump. Which, mind you, are heavily nerfing his curse energy output and control over Megumi's body. He has no domain and only two arms left, so Fuga will be the only choice left. However, what if I told you there's a clue regarding the ending of Jujutsu Kaisen, and even more evidence that Yuji is going to die? What did he say? Hey. Well, Jin Itadori turning out to be the reincarnated twin of Sukuna shines a new light upon it, as it adds more emphasis to the concept of rebirth, which has always been at the core of Jujutsu Kaisen. It was introduced to us back in chapter 145, when Six Eyes was being discussed, and Tengen revealed the crucial role they had over the past 1000 years. Their fate was intertwined with hers, as their primary duty was to safeguard the star plasma vessels and Tengen until their merger. But since the merger occurs every 500 years, and given the last expected merger was in 2006, we can infer that the other two were in the early 1500s and 1000s. Kenjaku even noted that the first Six Eyes user he fought actually defeated him. Hence, around the 1500s, Kenjaku killed the both star plasma vessel and the Six Eyes user within less than a month of their birth. But on the day of the merger, a new vessel and a Six Eyes user re-emerged out of nowhere, like a reincarnation. Now the chains of fate were mentioned again with Toji, as he broke them and caused this entire story to occur in the first place, where we even see Sukuna learning immortality due to the use of curse energy, which means means it needs to be removed from the world. When we remember what Jogo stated that curse
spirits will be able to meet again in a hundred years from now and Hanami added that they will have different forms, it raises an interesting point. Despite the fact that the origin of curses and jujutsu is largely unknown, we can conclude that curses have always existed alongside humanity. This is because of the constant negative feelings fueling curse energy, such as humanity's fear of plagues which cause the existence of cursed spirits. We know that there's no sure way to eradicate them for good. After all, humans will always have these feelings and emotions. I mean, think about it. What's to stop Sukuna and Gojo from getting reincarnated again in a few centuries? Even Gojo's birth altered the balance of the Jujutsu world and caused the spawning of many more curses so their rebirth would kick off the cycle of suffering again. In fact, Jogo using the word wasteland ties into this extremely well. The term wasteland called Koya in Japanese implies a place of emptiness or void. It suggests a concept similar to the afterlife where curses and old souls including human ones will ultimately end up. But here's where it gets better. Emptiness in Buddhism is known as sunyata and this is necessary for achieving enlightenment and breaking free from the cycle of rebirth known as samsara. By attaining the state of emptiness, one can reach nirvana and be liberated from the suffering of it. Interestingly, the cursed spirits mention that their forms will change just like the cycle of rebirth, which is why Yuki concluded that Jujutsu was simply fixing the consequences of a problem instead of stopping it from happening. She was correct in theorizing that the only way to get rid of curses for good is to eliminate curse energy from this world and then handed this research to Yuji Itadori. Therefore, it makes all the most sense that he and the other sorcerers will free the world from curse energy. In the absence of Tengen's barriers, this is necessary because countries like America and China now know about curse energy. So this is the best way to finish off the depressing world of Jujutsu. Otherwise, how will Gege address the plot device that the whole world now knows about curse energy since he wants to end the manga very soon? It will also further the idea that Gojo's students will live in a new world where they are not motivated by the ideology of kill or be killed. However, to achieve this requires a sacrifice. Yuji is pushing Sukuna to the brink. However, it's evident that even whilst dying, Sukuna will be too proud to beg for his life as he stated to Yorizu that defeat is equal to death for him. Hence, as he dies and metaphorically passes the title of strongest to Yuji, it would be in his character to leave the biggest menace for him to deal with. The merger. This being, which will be the union of cursed energy from the entirety of Japan with Tengen, which mind you we were told has a monopoly on this energy resource, will be the ultimate test of Yuji's determination. As we must remember that Yuji said his death is a cheap price to pay if it's taking Sukuna down with him, but now he has a last remaining trace of his bloodline in the world, so he must take down the merger as well as the cursed energy with him. This will fulfill the ending Gege informed us about, that everyone will live but Yuji will die in the end. But to enjoy more peak fiction, find out how Kurama was revived and has entered Naruto's daughter Himawari in this video.